The Couple Next Door, written by Peg Lynch and starring Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce. More coffee, dear? Uh, coffee, yes, please. Mm. And Effie? Is there not? Oh, yes. Now, if you're going to stay with Bobby this morning, Aunt Effie, is there any shopping I can do for you downtown? No, no, not a thing. I had all my Christmas shopping done in October. Oh, boy, I hate people like that. <laughs> Go on, now, I bet you haven't got it all done, Aunt Effie. Oh, yes, I have. I am always through with my Christmas shopping at least by Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, I wish <laughs> I could be that way. Drink your milk, Betsy, dear. Oh, by the way, how did the pictures turn out you had taken? The picture. Oh, yeah, how about oh. that? Did we get any proofs? He was going to mail them in a few days. When do we have those taken? Why, that was, uh... It was a Friday. Friday. It was, yeah. must have been a... It was a week ago Friday, wasn't it? Yeah, well, he should have sent the proofs by this time. That, that, that's two weeks. Yes. Well, I'll go call the Lockwood Studios right now and see what yeah, happens. Yeah, call we'll them never up. get the pictures by Christmas. Oh, I love Christmas. Don't you, Betsy? Oh, yes. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you putting your Christmas tree this year? Oh, a tree? Well, I don't know. I hadn't thought about it. We might put it in my den. That would be kind of cozy. Oh, I think it should go in the living room. I meant which corner of the living room. Uh. I think Mommy wants to put it in the hall, Daddy. She said we could have a bigger tree if we put it in the hall. That would be rather nice, yes. And you know what? We're going to go out and cut down our own tree this year, Betsy. The blue spruce? Oh, no, darling, not our blue spruce. I mean, a, a friend of mine who grows Christmas trees said we could come out there and pick out the one we wanted and... May I go with you, Daddy? Sure. They sent them. Oh, why? They... they mailed the proofs of the pictures to us last week while I said we certainly didn't get them. Well, don't tell me they were lost in the mail. Wait a minute. It seems to me now that I think back... Yes, I do recall seeing an envelope that said Lockwood Studios, and I put it aside thinking, you know, we'd look them over together in the evening... Oh, now what did I do with it? My dear Watson, with all due respect to Sherlock Holmes, let us establish one fact clearly. There is nothing elementary about the shrewd deductions Eric Severide makes as he analyzes world affairs on CBS radio. As chief Washington correspondent for CBS News, Mr. Severide has opened to him almost every possible source of information. Experience has sharpened his perspective and given him an extraordinary working knowledge of the forces that make history. It's taught him to view each new development in terms of cause and effect. Each Monday through Friday night as you join Eric Severide and most of these same stations, you'll find his news analysis remarkably free of snap judgments and predetermined conclusions. You'll discover, too, that his carefully considered appraisals of the news not only contain real clues to what's going on in the world, but also they make the news as exciting as any Arthur Conan Doyle story. Everything here in the living room. How about that pile of magazines over there? Maybe the envelope got mixed in with them. Mm. Well, I'm not in my den. I've gone all through my desk. Did you look through that mess of papers you have on the top? I resent that. <laughs> <laughs> well, your desk looks awful, dear. In the other house, Aunt Effie kept the top of the desk cleaned off fairly well because it was in the living room. Now that he has his very own den, he leaves the worst mess and just closes the door. <laughs> it gives me the feeling of being a brilliant, eccentric scientist. <laughs> I see. Well, I wish you'd be brilliant enough to find the proofs of our pictures. Honey, how could you be so careless? What I can't see is how you could resist looking at them when they arrived. Goodness, I'd have been so curious. Well, I remember now they arrived just as I was bathing Bobby and my hands were wet. And I just set them down. It was snowing and the mailman was nice enough to bring the mail right to the door instead of leaving it way out there in the box. Wait a minute. Did he come to the front door? Yes, sure. Well, then, if you were in the front hall, you probably set the mail down on something. Now, let's see. Maybe the piano? Maybe they got mixed up with Betsy's music. Well, let's look. Yeah. Speaking of Betsy, where is she? Isn't it time for her school bus? Mm -hmm. She's upstairs. Betsy, hurry up, dear. Oh, I guess she has ten minutes yet. We're nice and early today. <laughs> Here they are. Here they are. You were right, Aunt Effie. Mixed in with some music on the piano. Oh, God. <laughs> no, open them up, dear. Bring them in the dining room. Let's spread them out on the table. Oh, now, where did I leave my glasses? In the kitchen? Oh, yes. I put them on to read the frying pan. Now, where... 
Okay, here we are. Now, move those candles. What did she say? What? What did Aunt Effie say? She put her glasses on to read the frying pan. Oh, yes. The electric one on the handle. It tells what temperature to fry bacon. Oh, 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 <laughs> yeah. yes, yes, yes. I thought, you know, read the frying pan. I don't that know what sounds she was... silly. Yeah. Now, how are the pictures? Wait a minute now. Let, let, let me get them all spread out. Let me well, get them... Well, I can't find my glasses. Look on the salt and pepper shelf over the stove, Aunt Effie. Hey, they're numbered up in the corner there. That's good. Now. Well... Gee, they all seem to be very good of you, dear, but not of me. Oh, I don't think so at all. First glance here, they all seem to be good of you, but not of me. Well, I can't find them. Here. Here, now look, that, that one's very good of you. This one? Well, I think that's excellent of you. Well, I do. Why, my nose is terrible on this. That's a very bad angle. Oh, I don't think so. I like it. But look, look at me, for heaven's sakes. What's that on my ear? My ear looks pointed like a rabbit. Oh, that's the decoration on the back of that cherry head you sit in. It blends in with your ear. Well, it's very good of Betsy and the baby. Yeah, they're all good of Betsy. Mm. Oh, no, no, this one isn't very good. Her eyes are funny. She's squinting. Well, I can't find my glasses. Did you look in your apron pocket? No, here they are. <laughs> well, how are the pictures? Terrible. Well, they're good of everybody <laughs> but me. Where are the ones I was on? Here, here, right here. Say, that's good of Aunt Effie. Oh, yes. Oh, I don't like this at all. Well, it's certainly better of you than it is of me. I look awful. Mm -hmm. Look at the angle of my chin and my dress is all bunched at the collar. Oh, boy, well, look at me if you, if you think you look awful. That's supposed to be a smile. I look as though I was sick. Oh, did you find the picture? Yes, yes, these are just uh, proofs, Betsy. Let her look, dear. Yeah. Is I on any more? Yeah, here, here's another. Gee, my hair ribbon looks funny. Well, your hair ribbon is the least of it. Well, I'm sorry I let you talk me into being in your family pictures. I'm afraid I've just ruined them. Oh, no, Aunt Effie. Let me see, Aunt Effie. Oh, well, I just look frightful. My goodness, I look so old. Oh, I think it's good, Aunt Effie. What's wrong with it? It looks just like you. Well. Uh, Betsy, get, get your overshoes on. It's time for your school bus. Oh, look at this one of me. Look, oh, you got to remember these are proofs now. Well, they're, they're not retouched. Hold them up to the light backwards. Well, it you? doesn't make any difference. I still look awful. Well, it's very good of you, dear, this one. Good? Th that, that... Well, it's better than some of the others of you. I certainly hope I don't really look like that. Oh, honestly, what are we going to do? Do? We're going to tell the photographer we don't like him. He'll have to do them over. Oh, you know how photographers are. They get upset when you don't like them. Look, we're paying for them. There's not one good picture of the whole group of us. Mm -hmm. Not one that's good of all of us. Now, when you go downtown today, just stop in and tell him. Me? No, no, you know I'm no good at that. You do it. Every time I've ever told a photographer I didn't like his pictures, he's talked me into liking them. I feel as though I'm hurting his feelings, telling him he didn't do good work, and by the time I leave, I've ordered even more than I planned on. Darling, I don't know why you're so mousy about things like that. Not me. I'll tell him. I don't mind at all. It's my money, and it's his business to take a picture that we all like. If he's a good businessman, I'm sure that he, he wants us to like them. I don't even feel he's a good photographer. Why, he's got me looking 102. I would get another photographer. Yeah, yeah, maybe we should try somebody else. Huh? We've already paid $25 down, dear. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, all right, okay, I'll tell him. I'm, I'll tell him he's going to have to do them over. <laughs> Mr. Piper, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Christmas is always a busy season for the photographer. <laughs> now, which one did you select? As a matter of fact, I was pretty proud of them. <laughs> Difficult to take a group picture where they're all good. Ah, uh, yes, yes. But, Mr. Lockwood, the truth of the matter is we're not really satisfied with them, and we'd like them done over. <laughs> done over. Done over? Well, yeah, I mean, oh, the photography's excellent, of course. <laughs> but we don't feel there's one that's really good of all of us. Well, I, 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 I must confess, I, I'm astonished. Well, if you want them done over, by all means, I certainly wouldn't want you to take anything you weren't happy oh, with. Oh, well, well, thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. I told my wife that you'd feel that way of about course, it. Of course, of course. Yes. But you must remember, these are proofs. After they're retired. Well, yes, I know, I know that. But my wife isn't happy with yes, them. Yes, I understand. And, uh, of course, you, Mr. Piper, might like to know that I was so pleased with them that I selected my favorite and had it made up large size for display in my front window. Perhaps if you see it, yes, and I think it's ready, do uh, you want to step this way? Oh, uh, yes, yeah. on display. Uh, oh, yes. When I'm proud of something, you can't blame me for wanting to display it. 
<laughs> well, here we are. Oh. As you see, retouching makes all the difference in the world. Well, yes, yes. I, yes, I guess it does make some difference. Excellent of you. Lovely of your wife. Your beautiful little girl. The baby is charming. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll admit it. It isn't bad. <laughs> retouched and everything. Yes. But I remember, Mr. Lockwood, that my wife wasn't very happy with this particular one. I don't think my eyes look right. Mr. Piper, I want both you and your wife to be satisfied and happy. Now, we'll do them over. If you want them done over, by all means. But I'm going to put this picture in my window right now. And just ask your wife to stop by. And then both of you think it over. <laughs> Yes, well, thank you, Myra, for calling. Well, I'm glad you liked it. Yes, I saw it on display, too. I was downtown and happened to go past, and I was so surprised because we hadn't decided yet and actually didn't like any of the proofs. Uh, well, we didn't think they looked like us, you know. Th oh, you do? Uh-huh. Well, yeah, well, thank you, Myra. Oh, yes, I'll tell him. <laughs> All right, Goodbye. Well, what was that, the 15th phone call tonight? Just about. Yeah. Myra. She went past the photographer's, too, and was astonished to see it in the window. She liked it. She thinks it's marvelous. Yeah. Simply marvelous. Wonderful of all of us. Looks just like us. Yeah, well, that seems to be the general consensus of opinion of our friends who have seen the picture on display. Eleanor said she took awful pictures. She wished she could take a flattering picture the way I do. Flattering? Yes, I apparently not only look like that, it flatters me. Look, I don't care what Eleanor said. You do not take a flattering picture, darling. You never have. I mean, it's too bad, but it's true. that They just never do you justice. Uh, well, you're all yours don't either, dear. You are much better looking. Oh, oh dear, does anybody ever take a picture they really like? <laughs> oh, I guess not. <laughs> oh, I did. I did once. I just loved it. Uh, Remember, right after we were married, it was a snapshot, and I had it blown up. And everybody that saw it said, who is that? <laughs> and I'd yeah. say, well, guess. <laughs> and they'd say, I don't know. I'd say, well, it is I. <laughs> and they'd say, you, I'd never have known it doesn't look a thing mm. like you. Yeah, I know, I know, <laughs> oh, I'm so I know. mad. Well, should we order the pictures? <gasps> I guess we might as well. Also order another pose that Aunt Effie is on. She didn't like any of them, but she's upset because she wasn't in the one that was on display. Well, let's see. <laughs> we get three poses. Now, which other one do you want? Yeah. Oh, now, look at that, I ask you. Now, how could a handsome man like me look so much like a, well, like an unhappy kangaroo? <laughs> oh, honey, it's not that bad, really. But, oh, dear, now look Shall at we? me, really. Oh, this is... <laughs> No oily aftertaste, no oily aftertaste. Now there's a margarine. Good luck to the margarine. With no oily aftertaste. Today's good luck is the light margarine. Light in flavor, light on your tongue. Just like the high-priced spread. Lever Brothers has world rights to the process that makes good luck different from other margarines. It's light. Guaranteed to leave no oily aftertaste or your money back. No oily aftertaste. Good luck, good luck. The Couple Next Door is written by Peg Lynch and stars Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce with Margaret Hamilton, Francie Myers, Nelson Olmstead and is produced by Walter Hart. This is Stuart Metz, inviting you to listen again tomorrow for The Couple Next Door. Thank you.